So if you're watching this, you want to know what the solutions are to the revision sheet. And what I'll do is, I've already got the solutions in here, but I'll explain how we get them. So an algebraic expression, well, we need to know what the word difference means. And difference means take away or subtraction. So we have k and 8, the difference of those is k minus 8. The word quotient means division. So the quotient of 3v and w is 3v divided by w, and it's okay to write that as a fraction also as 3v over w. The cost of 32 books at y dollars. Well, one book must be y dollars. Two books must be two y dollars. So 32 books must be 32 y dollars. Moving on to question two. They're telling us that the value of A is 4, the value of B is 16, and the value of C is negative 8. So it's a lot of substitution. So 7B means 7 lots of B. Take away the C value. And you notice I've got the C value in brackets there because it's negative, And it will help us with avoiding some mistakes. And when we work that out on the calculator, we get 120. Part B c squared remember c is negative 8 and if i don't put this one in brackets i won't get the proper answer of 64. if i leave the brackets out i'll get negative 64 which is the incorrect answer so please be careful with that with part c we make our substitution for the b value the a value and i made a little bit of a mistake setting this one up so when we work out the value of that we get a big long decimal, so we write it whole thing down because it doesn't say to round it off. And with part D, also we substitute in our A and our B value with the times in between because AB means times. And our C value, again I've left it in brackets, and you do that on your calculator using your fraction template and we get negative 8. Now with question 3, we've got an expression here. So what we've got is 7y positive 3, negative 6x, and positive 8z. So the number of terms in this expression, well, there's one term, there's another term, there's our third term, there's our fourth term. So the number of terms is 4. The word coefficient means the number in front of. So the number in front of our y term, there's our y term. So the number in front of it is the 7. The value of the constant term, well, the constant term doesn't have a pronumeral after it, and the only one that doesn't is our positive 3. Moving on to question 4, we want to simplify these. So if we look at our first one, we've got an, a, a mixture of multiplication and division. So 6m minus m is 5m, plus another 4m gives us our 9m. With part b, negative 7 times 6 is negative 42, and x times x gives us our x squared. The next one, our simplify, it probably should have read as expand, but we've, I've put it in here. So the 4 out the front means 4 lots of 2k, so 4 lots of 2k is 8k, and then we have 4 lots of negative 3 is negative 12. Or, as I've taught a lot of you, is put the minus sign down, and then 4 lots of 3 is our 12. With part D, <coughs> excuse me, division question, 18 divided by 9 gives us our 2, and AB divided by A, well, we can cancel our A's, because if I wrote this as a fraction, I'd have the 18AB over 9A, and our A's would cancel. So I'm left with just 2B. Again, this should have been an expand question, but here we go. 5y times 2, so 5 lots of 2 is 10, and we've got our y, minus sign, and 5y lots of 7y is 35y squared. And part f, a mixture of division and multiplication. Let's do the numbers first. 28 divided by 4 gives us 7, times 8 gives us the 56. m squared divided by m means we cancel an m out or subtract 1 because there's a 1 there from the index. So we've now just got an m and I times it by m cubed so that will give me m to the power of 4. We'll do our n's. 
n cubed divided by n is n squared times n to the power 4. We add the indices, we get n to the power 6. With question 5, we're going to use our index laws. We did use it a little bit in the last question in question 4. But again, we'll do numbers first. 12 times a 1 is 12 divided by 4 gives me my 3. x squared times x to the power 4 gives me x to the power 6 divided by x cubed. Subtract the indices now and we get 6 minus 3 gives us my x cubed. Part B, numbers first. 22 divided by 2 is 11. And y to the power 7 divided by y to the power 6. Again, we subtract the indices. 7 minus 6 gives us 1. And remember, we don't need to write that 1 there. So there's our most correct answer, 11y. For part C, let's do our x's first. x cubed divided by x squared. Subtract the indices. 3 minus 2 is 1, and we don't need to write it. And y to the power 5 divided by y to the power 3. Subtract our indices again, and we get y squared. Now with part D, this is our power of a power. And our trick there, our shortcut, we could either write that out twice and do our multiplying, or we saw our shortcut was just to multiply the indices there. So 3 times 2 gives me y to the power 6. Now with part E, what I've done is I've just shown you a bit of working at the same time. I'm sharing this power of 4 with every part of the term inside. So I've now got 3 with that power of 4. I've got my m squared with the power of 4, and I've got my p with the power of 4. And I just simplify those, so we get 3 to the power of 4 is 81, m to the power of 8 by multiplying these indices, and p to the power of 4. A little bit trickier, this next one. The bases of 5 and our pronumerals are in the index, or in the indices. So, same process. 5d times 5d, same base, and we just add the indices d plus d. And d plus d ends up being 5 to the power 2d. So if we scroll down a bit more to our other questions here with our index laws, being a little bit careful here, our power of 0 belongs to the x only, and anything to the power of 0 we found was 1. The 5 out the front is multiplying, so 5 times 1 gives us 5. And a more complicated one with a few things involved. So let's work out this part first. Share this power of 2 with both parts inside. So 3 to the power of 2 is 9, and x cubed all squared is x to the power of 6. So I haven't done anything with the times 4x to the power of 5 there. But the denominator I have x to the power of 4 times x becomes x to the power of 5. Now let's simplify this numerator a little bit more. 9 4 is a 36. And x to the power of 6 times x to the power of 5. Again, we add our indices and we get x to the power of 11. Our denominator was unchanged, but let's now do our division. 36 divided by 6 is 6. And x to the power of 11 divided by x to the power of 5. Subtract our indices here, and we get x to the power of 6. All right, we're on to question 6 now, our negative indices. So remember, the negative just means 1 over the same term with now the positive index. So we get 1 over 4 to the positive 2, which is 1 over 16. So 5 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 5 to the power of positive 1. And remember, we don't need to write our positive 1 in there. So now with some pronumerals, k to the power of negative 2 is 1 over k to the power of positive 2. And a little bit more involved, this next one, x squared to the power of negative 3. Well, the negative means 1 over, and then x squared to the positive 3. And we know our index laws, we can multiply these indices together. And 2 times 3 gives me x to the power of 6. So we get 1 over x to the power of 6. Now as we move through to our next part, c over 2 all to the power of negative 4. Our trick with that, 
was to find the reciprocal of the fraction, turn the fraction upside down, and now the positive power. Now we can share that positive power inside with both the numerator and denominator. So 2 to the power 4 and c to the power 4 is our next step. And then we can simplify some of that. 2 to the power 4 is 16, not 8. It's not 2 times 4, it's 2 to the power 4. So do it on your calculator if you want to double check. And then c to the power 4. We don't need the brackets around it though. I could have removed those. So move on to question seven. This is a proper expand question. This negative eight is multiplying both terms inside. So negative eight times two B is negative 16 B. Take away negative eight times five is negative 40. Now remember two negatives make a plus. So we've got negative 16 B plus 40. The next one, again, we're going to expand. So 5 lots of 2t is our 10t, 5 lots of 4 is 20, and there's our plus sign in between, and then we've got our 7t tacked onto the end there. Now let's collect some like, some like terms, 10t plus 7t is 17t plus our 20. These are not like terms, so do not add them together, just leave it as is. And a more involved one, Let's expand the first brackets. 4 lots of a is 4a squared. And 4 lots of b is 4b. Plus, so there's our plus sign. 3a times a gives us our 3a squared. Then minus. And 3a times 2b gives us our 6ab. Let's collect our like terms together now. 4a squared and our positive 3a squared is 7a squared, plus our 4b minus our 6ab. These are no longer like terms, so we can't simplify that any further. We now move on to question 8, where we have to factorise. And you'll notice I have done some of the organising or solving for you, giving you a bit of a hint. I did make a bit of an error here, so I had to change that. So 18y minus 10, looking at the numbers, our largest number that divides into both of those, known as our highest common factor, is 2. So that's what we write down there. There are no pronumerals common. So how many 2s in 18? There's 9, with our y still there, minus sign, and 2s into 10 go 5. Moving on to part B. I already did the other factor here in brackets. We just had to work out our highest common factor. So looking at the numbers, highest common factor of 14 and 21 was 7. And with how many 7s in 14z? That was 2z plus sign and 7s in 21 with 3. Again in part C, I did some of it for you. So looking at the numbers, the highest common factor of 32 and 10, you had to work out was 2. And they both had an A. So we've got a 2A as our highest common factor. Now how many 2s in 32? There's 16. And I've taken the A out, so there's no longer an A there. Plus sign in between. 2s in the 10 go 5. There's an A squared, but I've taken one of them out. So that leaves us still with one of them, and also the B is still there. Now part D and E you had to do yourselves. So numbers first, highest common factor of 9 and 12 is 3. Both terms have an M, and they also have an N, even though this one's got two of them. So 3's into 9 go 3, and I've taken the M and the N out. So there's no longer an M or an N there. Plus sign in between. 3's into 12 go 4. And I've taken an M and an N out. And I'm still left with an N there. That's the part inside our brackets. And the last one. A little bit more confusing and complicated. But the same process. Highest common factor of 20 and 16 is 4. Both terms have an x squared, and both terms have a y, 